So it's been a while since I've had any worthwhile Bronco news because, well, frankly, we just haven't had any with this whole thing going on right now. But we have a bit that's even interesting enough that's got my brain working and trying to figure out what is going on here because this is pretty interesting. Now, a couple different things to talk about. First off, Ford has put a patent in for the acronym GOAT, G-O-A-T, which most people use as greatest of all time. Now, we don't know what this acronym is going to stand for, what it is uh, related to, other than Ford wanted to uh, put the patent in as a drive mode. So we have a GOAT drive mode. Um, I'm not sure how that's going to go. Maybe it'll be like uh, go over any terrain, things like that. I mean, it could be a number of different things, but there is a patent in for a GOAT acronym drive mode. So that's the first thing we're going to touch on. Uh, we're going to have to wait and see down the road what that evolves into, what they're going to use it for, but that's pretty interesting. Now, there's also been breaking news on an electronically controlled suspension setup for the Bronco. And this seems to be a very intricate and very involved suspension setup. Now, I think even to today's standards, this could get a little crazy, so bear with me. What we have which could possibly be an option. We don't know if this is standard. We don't know if this is optional. This is just it's being reported by uh, a couple of different people now. It says that the Bronco is getting an electronically adjustable suspension setup. Now, this has a complex mixture of both hardware and software that's going to monitor traffic, weather, terrain, and even the music that you're going to listen to. Now, what it's going to do in monitoring all that is adjust the ride height accordingly. Now this system can work in different drive modes, a lot of different suspensions, whether you want to set it up automatically, on the fly, do it manually by yourself. But the one mode that they're actually calling this is an anomaly mitigation suspension mode. Now somehow this is monitoring the terrain you're driving on and somehow it claims that even if you're driving over terrains that it will help drop the front of the suspension to give you better visibility over objects. I'm not sure how that works, but it does sound pretty cool. I can think of a few scenarios while off-roading or going through some trails where you're at a slight incline and you're having a hard time seeing over the roof line to the next object over that hill. And it would be nice to have that front end just a little bit lower so that you can see what's coming. Now, I don't know how that's gonna help with uh, cresting the top of the hill with a lower ride height. I'm sure that's integrated in the electronics somehow as well, but that was just the fourth all of mine. Uh, let's get more into what's going on here. Uh, oh man, this is, this is an interesting, interesting setup. I'll tell you. Now the patent states that it varies targets at the Bronco system that determine what suspension mode it should be in. Those targets include things like the terrain the car is on, traffic, weather, location, fuel economy, which setting you have the truck in, such as sport, eco, normal, that kind of thing. And of course, once it analyzes all this stuff, it determines which mode or drive mode it's going to put itself in. Now, there's a couple different things that jump off this page to me, and that is the drive mode, uh, well, the name that Ford gave these drive modes. It's pretty interesting. We have entertainment mode, music mode, and daredevil mode. That sounds like a fun mode I want to try. Now, according to the patent and everything on the article, it says that the entertainment mode will monitor drivers' non-traditional inputs to determine uh, which of the other two modes, such as music or daredevil, in which to activate. Music mode is going to set the car's ride height to match whatever's coming out of the speakers. So what, if you're you're listening to country, it's going to set you up higher. If you're listening to jazz, it's going to put you down lower. I don't know. That's just a weird, a weird mode to have. I'm not sure what to think about that one. All right, so let's get into this daredevil mode because I just found a spot in the article in which we can talk about that a little bit. It says the patent for daredevil mode claims the vehicles, and I quote, before I start, I quote, the vehicle suspension height may be mapped to the target suspension height such that to the vehicle. It can be driven on, for example, two and or three wheels without turning. Now, it sounds to me like they're claiming that you can tilt the vehicle on its side or bring a wheel up out of the ground just by sitting still. Now, if that is true, that could prove useful on 
a lot of off obstacles, large boulders, rocks, maybe a big crevice down in the dirt you don't want to fall into. I don't know, but that sounds pretty wild and definitely really advanced. Now, the article also gives a mode list that was given with the patent, so I'm going to run down those real quick, starting with mobility, which they say the avoidance of traffic, freight, city, mobility modes fall under mobility umbrella. We also have avoidance which is just to deliver quicker response for the suspension. Traffic, which is specifically a comfort mode. Freight, which could be load leveling. Suspension accounts for heavier cargo load. City mobility sets the vehicle up for aggressive driving. Cooperative matches the ride height to that of the nearby vehicle to facilitate transfer of cargo between them. Now I'm gonna pause right there because that one actually could be a pretty interesting mode because if you've ever butted up two pickup trucks and wanted to take something off the bed of one and into another, they're not always matched up height-wise. And it sounds like this mode could adjust the height of the Bronco to whatever the height of the other vehicle is so you could slide things right off onto the other vehicle. That would be pretty useful. Next would be utility says the office, towing, cradle, and rest modes fall under a utility umbrella. Office, a quiet, comfort-focused mode geared more toward remote work within the car. Towing, optimizes suspension for towing. Cradle, which it says assigns a low-frequency movement in the vehicle to soothe a baby. Interesting to know. Resting, similar to an office setting, which makes for a quiet ride and squishy. Suspension Minder is a haptic safety mode which fall under Suspension Minder umbrella. Haptic driver alerts can be registered by body motion vibration introduced by the suspension. Wow, that's a mouthful. Safety, which maximizes the suspension stability of safe avoidance maneuver similar to avoidance mode. Sorry if this is getting to be a long list. I know it's a lot, but bear with me. We have driver mode. Novice and experienced driver functions fall under driver umbrella. Experienced driver. If the vehicle determines the driver can be more experienced, it sets up the vehicle accordingly. Novice driver. If the vehicle determines the driver is inexperienced, it sets up the vehicle accordingly. Fun to drive. This delivers a rough ride for a fun to ride sensation for the vehicle occupants. Fun to drive, sets up the suspension for an aggressive off-road driving. Quiet, works in terrain, for example, uh, active noise cancellation to reduce road-induced noise or detect vehicle vibrations. Final one, guys, vigilance boosting. Similar to the haptic function that determines driver fatigue and can buzz the car via the suspension to wake him or her up. Now, I know that's a lot of modes and it sounds extremely complicated. I'm sure it is. And personally, I have a, a mixed bag of feelings on this. And I know some of you may hate me for this, but hear me out. I know it's supposed to be a hardcore off-road vehicle. And it's supposed to compete with the Jeep Wrangler. But with all these modes, I mean, look at I mean the, that long list of things that it says it can do on its own. Are you really driving this vehicle or are you just pushing a button to set the vehicle up to drive itself? Now, honestly, there are a couple modes in here that could be extremely useful, for sure. There's a lot of modes in here to me that seem a little bit of a waste of time and money. Uh, I mean, a baby mode, for instance. Why, why do we need a baby mode? And I'm not too sure how I feel about a mode that can set up itself due to driver experience, novice, um, you know, it determines its suspension settings and what it's going to do based on what it thinks you can do rather than you trying to learn how to navigate a trail or learning yourself how to operate the vehicle or just learning off-road technique in general. It sounds like the vehicle is going to do it for you, which in a way kind of takes some of the fun out of it. Um, but I don't want you to take that the wrong way and think I'm thinking negative of the setup because I'm not. A lot, again, a lot of that couldn't be very, very useful. Um, I just think sometimes they're going a little bit overboard. Now, we have a picture of the four-wheel drive patent system for the Bronco. And if you're an engineer, help me out with this because I'm not 100% sure. But 
right in the middle of the patent in between all the tires here we have a what i'm going to guess to be an air ride system for air you know air tank four valves we have actuators here so obviously i'm thinking this is an air suspension setup now since it did say electronically controlled i do know that the jeep grand cherokee has an air suspension setup that's electronically controlled so i don't know if that means the bronco has an air setup or if it's strictly electronic, I'm not 100% sure. So if you can interpret this, let me know. But outside of that, it does show that each wheel is being controlled individually. So obviously this is showing that the Bronco is gonna become a lot more advanced than even I thought it was gonna be. I mean, this is supposed to be the hardcore off-roader. It's gonna compete with the Wrangler. And the more that we're finding out about it, especially with patents such as this and all these different drive modes, I think Jeep's got a reason to worry at this point. So. We're getting more and more anxious now that I've got this bit of information. I'm more excited than I was before, although we're, God knows how long we're at to wait for all this to come out. But it is getting closer. We need to be patient. Um, obviously, Ford's making respirators now and not trucks, but we're going to get there. I promise we're going to get there. So make sure you hit that subscribe button. Drop a like on the video if you enjoyed it. Hopefully it was informative. Leave your comments down below, and I'll catch you next time.